Welcome back to the Boring Bookshelf. Um, today I'm going to be talking about uh, Aaron M. Evans' uh, Brimstone Angels. Um, did listen to an audio book. Fortunately it is out of print, so we don't have physical copies of it. Um, actually originally got interested in it when they uh, did the Thundering series and basically bought back a lot of the um, Yeah, a lot of older characters for Forgotten Realms. Um, so when I got Adversary, I got interested in reading the origins of the stories. Um, Paula was really interested in it, seeing that she had not read much about Tieflings and was interested in them. Um, it was definitely nice reading some Forgotten Realms books, not by Salvastor, Greenwood, or Paul S. Kemp. They're the main ones that I always read. I mean, I, my first real introduction to real high fantasy was Forgotten Realms and Dragonlance. Definitely with Salvastor, um, a little bit of Greenwood, did read um, the Elminster series. Um, but hadn't really read it, much other out of them. Um, I did read some Troy Denning. It's also quite interesting reading a Forgotten Realms book after having played D&D a lot and actually looking at it from a D&D standpoint. It was... It brings a whole new level to the book when you're looking at it as if you were playing the campaign and going, oh yeah, they just rolled a nat one. <laughs> or wow, I can't believe they pulled that off. They had to have rolled a nat 20. Um, yes, uh, great story, um, it's actually one of the best Forgotten Realms books I've read for having more organic relationships, I mean, the main characters are the twins, Farida and Havilar, they're around 17 or 18, and in the world they're kind of first, that's, they're starting to really find boys, essentially. So, it is still high fantasy, so it is not focusing on relationships, but it does have an organic feel of how a teenager is really exploring the idea of relationships. Um, it's definitely an uh, interesting take on Farida and her semi-interest in what becomes comes her patron, uh, Lorcan, a Cambian. Um, she's a little naive at first, but not idiotically to the point of, you know, making excuses for him or anything like that. She, she understands that, yes, he is a fiend. He is not, he, he does not have her best interest at heart um, first and foremost. He may do things to actually help her, but it's because it'll help him. It's definitely, um, right up there with any of the other Forgotten Realms book. Great on venturing. Um, see, I'm torn if I want to give any spoilers or not. I mean, it is out of print, but it's also mainly out of print more of because, unfortunately, it was... Aaron M. Evans who wrote it, so not many people gave her a chance. Um, most people, if they're reading Forgotten Realms, are going to go for the greats, and they're almost always going to go for the male writers. Um, she did a great job. Um, I think probably part of the reason why the relationships come off more organic, more realistic, even in a fantasy setting, is because she is actually a woman and actually thought about that, not went more along the lines of a lot of the older men who, you know, grew up playing D&D may not have ever had a girlfriend until they were an adult. I mean, the, the story does cover a lot of 
dealing with the fact that Farida does end up having a patron. She has become a warlock. Technically an accidental warlock. She wasn't looking to make a pact. Um, I am definitely interested in continuing the series. Probably not currently. I do know the next book seems to be following one of their companions a little bit more. Am I boring you? Um, one of the companions, Tam, um, apparently is following him a little bit more. Um, I don't know for sure how much interested, interest I'd have in following him. Um, a tiny bit of a spoiler, he is a Harper, having grown up reading mainly Drist, um, who does have ties to the Harpers, that it does pull, give me some interest, but I was really interested in the series more for the Tieflings, so I may or may not uh, continue with it real soon. Um, I have read The Adversary already, and I kind of want to read that all of it to get back up to where it would go to the adversary to sundering book. Um, but it's not high on my priorities right now because they are good books, but she does follow other characters later in the other books that I'm less interested in currently. Um, the action definitely, she did a real good job writing it, it, a lot of times it literally felt like I was sitting down at a Dungeons and Dragons table listening to the DM describe exactly what we managed to do, what we failed at doing. Um, so if you're into D&D, obviously reading Forgotten Realms is a fun way to kind of get that feeling of playing D&D without being able to say the group, especially currently while well, most people are quarantined. <laughs> um, her writing style very much went right along with feeling like you're sitting down at a table listening to the descriptions of what everybody's doing. Um, I could definitely see it having been they played a campaign and she turned the notes into a book. Loved getting a little bit more tiefling lore. I know a little bit from playing D&D. Um, I'm more used to warlocks and, well, let me rephrase. It was, it was nice getting some more lore with warlocks and tieflings. Um, didn't deal with a lot of warlocks other than playing D&D, definitely not with tieflings. Um, but yeah, um, typically with me dealing with warlocks, other people wouldn't necessarily realize you're a warlock without you telling them. And this, she described things that would make it kind of clear that somebody probably wasn't just a mage or a sorcerer. Um, it was an interesting look on, on that side, and hadn't done with, dealt with that before. And it was added an extra layer or two uh, Farida, and she was already kind of an outcast because she's a tiefling. People look at her and go, "Oh God, she's a monster. She's she's a devil." Or if they understood what a tiefling is, still knowing she has devilish blood. She did a really good job dealing with the fact that both Havilar and Farida didn't like hiding the third tiefling, mainly because it was uncomfortable to do such. They're in a fairly hot environment and having to wear hoods constantly. They'd get hot. They may be fire resistant, but that doesn't keep them from getting hot <laughs> and uncomfortable. Um, Farido definitely is more level-headed and understanding that there's a real reason for it. 
but she still didn't enjoy it. Um, I'm used um, when I started playing D and D. It was with Adventurers League. They didn't really. You don't really focus on the full backstory on people. Most of the, most of the DMs wouldn't even go as far as, oh yeah, your race is one that most other races are going to not trust. Um, it's definitely a nice change to actually see stuff like your race playing D and D does matter. Um, I've tried to do it in my campaigns, but I don't get to play as much as I want. Um, but it gives, gave me some extra inspiration for doing it. Yeah, and in the book, one of their companions, when they first meet him, when he first sees them, he thinks that the twins are there trying to kill him. Um, they're actually trying to save him, but uh, the, there is an ambush by orcs and they went to try and save everybody, and Bryn sees, uh, I think, Farida and completely thinks that a devil is there to claim his soul. Um, that's something that would make sense. If you're not used to seeing tieflings, you might know what they are, but you're not used to seeing them. You see one show up, you're going to be freaking out, going, oh my god, this thing's coming to kill me. And that's something that isn't really covered that much. I mean, even Drist didn't get as much um, backlash as the Tiefling twins get. <laughs> um, it's definitely a nice addition to the lore and Forgotten Realms that I know. Yeah, so that's really what I have on um, the Brimstone Angels. It is great read. It is out of out of print, unfortunately. Might change a little bit with the um, increased interest in D and D and anything connected to it. So they may end up reprinting it at some point. Otherwise, currently it is only available in ebook and um, audio, uh, audio versions unless you get lucky and manage to find an old copy. Most people who have an old copy, if they're willing to sell it, they're kind of pricing it kind of outrageous. <laughs> Was trying to get a copy until I saw the prices. <laughs> but um, Please like, comment, subscribe. Um, got anything you want to specifically ask me about? Um, pretty much any of Forgotten Realms, but Specifically Brimstone, feel free to ask in the comments. I'll uh, gladly discuss it. Um, yes. Great book. If you love Forgotten Realms but haven't read any of it, any of the Brimstone Angels, they are definitely worth a look at. Thanks. See you next time.